Hello everybody, and welcome back to Insider's Guide. In this episode, we're discussing one of the most perilous resorts in the West, in Taos. If you haven't already, go check out part A before this, as it'll provide some information that is crucial to understanding what I say in this part. So with that, let's continue in Insider's Guide to Ski Resorts, Taos. Coming up to the Patrol HQ Summit is Lift 7A, a rickety old center pole double chair that is just one of two non-quads in the resort. 7A is just an access lift to get from Kachina Basin to West Basin and also to help in repeat skiing the first couple runs on Highline Ridge. 7A is super easy to miss, so watch here. As you're coming down Honeysuckle, there's this little cut through the trees. Take this cut to get to 7A. You'll want to know that if you intend to get as many runs as possible on Highline Ridge, which we'll get to in just a minute. Upper Honeysuckle here is a relatively narrow road that gets quite crowded, and I absolutely hate it. It has spectacular panoramic views, but don't be that guy that blocks the run to get your pictures. Take pictures at the top before you head down Honeysuckle. If you're advanced enough, I always try to take Sir Arnold Lunn or Lorelei instead of Honeysuckle to get to the Kachina Basin side. Another option is to take Bob's, but that's typically busier and it gets way flatter at the bottom. Now, just below 7A is Lift 7, a triple, and the other non-quad. 7 has the Taos Terrain Park on Maxis or Lone Star, and the only two traditional greens, that being wide, straight down, but gentle runs rather than roads, which are Honeysuckle and Lower Totemoth. These runs are the only place that lower level skiers will truly feel at home at Taos, so there you go. This little cut across to Lower Totemoth is quite flat and can actually be easy to miss, so make sure you keep your eye out for it while you're still keeping up a touch of speed. This upper section of Totemoth is quite steep, so if you're a beginner skier, only use the lower section. The lower section of both greens do narrow up quite a bit, almost into roads, but I will warn you that Honeysuckle tends to be the busier. The Taos Terrain Park cannot even compare to some of the parks you can find elsewhere, so don't head to Taos for the park, but it's there if you want it. Vinkle Reed, Easy Trip, Japanese Flag, and Lower Patton are all roads. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, Taos doesn't have great beginner terrain. This far lift, Lift 4, brand new for this year, is the other high-speed detachable quad at Taos. Right at the base of the lift is the Bavarian. The Bavarian is highly advertised, but if you haven't heard about it before, here's the synopsis. The Bavarian is, as the name implies, a German restaurant right on the slopes of Taos. It features awesome bratwurst and 32-ounce beers. Out of all on-mountain restaurants across the United States, this might just be my favorite. It's certainly up there. It's quicker than you think it would be when you see the big line, and it's not insanely exorbitant. I would highly, highly recommend checking it out. It's unlike anything else that you can get on mountain across the entire west, at least as far as I'm aware. Off the top of lift 4, the main run is Shalako. Shalako is a super wide groomed blue, and of all the blues in Taos, it's probably my favorite. It's also one of the easier blues in Taos. Easy Trip goes around and offers access to yet more mogul single blacks. I'm starting to sense a theme. Lower Easy Trip can be easy to miss, so if you're trying to stick to the greens, be sure to keep your eyes peeled. Lower down, the main groomer is Baby Bear. There is a road that cuts across right here over to Honeysuckle, so you can get to Lift 7 that way. This little run, Upper Patton, is a quiet little run through the woods that is really tranquil and quite nice. From Lift 4, you have two options to get back to the base. The way I would highly, highly recommend is taking 7 to 7A and skiing down West Basin. The reason is because the other method is Rupasol, which is a long, flat green. Yes, it is possible for me at about 175 pounds to make it from 4 to 1 without pushing, but just barely. So I try to avoid Rubisol, and I would recommend that you do too, especially if you're on a snowboard. Do be aware that if you take Ponzi Scheme or Streetcar, you'll be stuck on Rubisol going back to the main base without an opportunity to get to 4. One of the best runs in the Kachina Basin is Alfunco, and it's a local's favorite. Alright, so now it's time to talk about the extreme terrain. The Taos extreme terrain is divided into three main zones, West Basin Ridge, Highline Ridge, and Kachina Peak. To get to most of Taos's extreme terrain, you'll start from Patrol HQ at the top of Chair 2 and do a 10-15 to 15 minute moderate difficulty hike up on a trail through the forest. At the top, it splits, and you can go left to Highline Ridge or right to West Basin Ridge. We'll start with West Basin Ridge, which is, in my opinion, the hardest terrain zone on the whole mountain. This goes for all three zones, but the further you hike, the less busy it gets. 
and in all honesty, a vast majority of West Basin Ridge isn't even hiking. From Patrol HQ, you can climb up to about Fabian, and from there you can ski down the ridge for the most part. The thing that makes West Basin Ridge so difficult is the rocks. There are huge cliffs every which way, and only a handful of narrow chutes in between each. And oh yeah, there's trees everywhere too. I would advise against hitting those. Chest trauma is generally pretty bad for your health. Some of the most famous stuff are these runs right in the corner, and with good reason. These are some of the craziest lines you'll ever ski, but also offer untracked powder for a few days after a storm. It's almost impossible to go an hour without hearing someone talking about Stauffenberg. My personal favorite line on West Basin Ridge is Meatball. If you ski all the way down to Wild West Glade, you'll be rewarded with untracked powder as well, but beware that the skiing's not quite as extreme as flying down a run like high somewhere. Taos has some of the most insane inbounds terrain anywhere, and West Basin Ridge is exactly that. Now, if you were to have taken a left at the top instead of a right, you would be hiking up Highline Ridge. Highline Ridge is a bit easier in comparison to what we just talked about. Its trees are much further apart, and it's less steep. The moguls are more prominent, but the runs themselves are wider. Especially runs like Juarez are the type of extreme terrain you could find at an average ski resort. It's West Basin Ridge and Kachina Peak that make Taos special. If you're just getting into the Taos extreme terrain, start with runs like North American, and then make your way to Juarez and Hidalgo. Nino's Heroes is narrower than the previous two, and it has a short section of chute partway down. Billy Soul and Two Bucks both have lots of trees, while Corner Chute has large rocks everywhere that require mandatory straightlining in some areas. Trescow starts in the trees, but then opens up on its lower half. Twin Trees, Lift Shack, and Cabin all have sections of super narrow gaps between rocks that mostly require full sends. These chutes aren't quite as narrow or steep as the West Basin Ridge ones, but they're no cakewalk either. The trees aren't thinned, so if you want to hit some extreme tree skiing, head anywhere in between Ninos and Trescow and drop in where allowed. Hitting at least one of these is a staple, and if you're capable, is an absolute must hit. If you're up for an additional 40 minute hike, you can boot pack it all the way to the summit of Kachina Peak. Kachina Peak is just special, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Unloading Lift 4 in the shadow of the majesty of Kachina Peak is incomparable. The excitement of looking down from the summit is indescribable. It is totally worth every single minute of the hike. The peak offers a wide, wide area to play around in the powder. It is special. Heading straight down Main Street isn't the most difficult run by any means, but it's still just so much fun. Now, there is this Kachina Peak lift, but it is extremely rare to open. I would highly, highly recommend planning as if it won't be open, because odds are that's exactly what you're going to encounter. However, if the lift is open, take it. Take it as many times as possible. Kachina Peak is what skiing's all about. Trying to think of how in the world that lift was built keeps me up at night. Not really, but you get the point. If the lift is running, you'll want to take it to get to all of the runs from Main Street over to Lift Shack Chute. Everything to the right you'll probably want to hike to from Patrol HQ. When the lift is running, beware that more people are going to want to take the lift, and as such, all of the Kachina Peak runs are going to get way more skied off, so your best bet may be to do the hike from Patrol HQ to get away from everyone else. Well, that about wraps it up for Taos. If you're a lower level skier, avoid it. If you're an upper level skier, don't sleep on it. That's just about all I've got for you. Now you can go check out another episode of Insider's Guide exploring resorts all over the West. As always, please leave any questions down below. I hope that this was helpful, and thank you all so much for watching. All my love, I'm out.